There are reasons why more and more scientists are accepting the subglacial flow model for drumlin formation. This is not only because with melting ice alone it's impossible to replicate drumlins, but mostly because there is evidence of high-speed water erosion all over glaciated regions. These crescent ruts are a type of streamlined formation and are evidence of sheet water flow. They can be found at an increasingly large scale. These crescent ruts are also found on a steep wall of a V-shaped canyon in the Sierra Nevadas. This is supposedly a glacier-carved area. So why are there such steep and narrow ravines? They also make quick turns like a winding river. And just like a river, there are accretion ridges high up on these canyons. And there is another feature that is formed under these same conditions. Current ruts. These parallel ruts were eroded by sheet water flow and preserved the path of the current. Scientists suggest that there was a current so fast that it caused fluvial plucking. The water force fractured the rock into arch-shaped fractures. Then the power of the current broke off the rock, creating U-shaped excavations. This suggests that crescent forms were made from fluvial plucking and formed rapidly. They then became smoothed out from high-speed water flow, just as potholes also have a smooth finish. But this smooth surface is called glacial polish and is attributed to ice. You see, glacial polish is the one thing solid ice could actually make, because moving ice would act as a giant sanding belt. But when we look at glacial polish, we find it on uneven terrain. Near streams. And waterfalls. Also in ruts. So clearly this polish was made by water. But on this polish is the most amazing feature. That is, these small craters with tails trailing them. This is called pitting and can only form in very high-speed currents that create cavitation. 
Cavitation is when water becomes forcibly vaporized from experiencing low pressure conditions. When we increase the flow rate, the water in the throat where the pressure is lowest begins to boil. Small bubbles are formed. These are cavities filled with cold steam and other gases diffused from the liquid. The noise is generated by the collapse of these bubbles as they move into the higher pressure in the diffuser. When these bubbles collapse against the surface, they create the craters we find on propellers. This looks exactly like the pitting we see on glacially polished rock, and some scientists have proposed that it is. Then water flow adds a tail to this formation to make it a directional feature. Here we see a direction going uphill on the rock. This is still downstream since this is deep within Yosemite's valley. Pitting is found in flutes, which are cone-shaped indentations theorized to be from water vertices glancing against the bedrock. Since standing vertices in the form of potholes are found here, it makes sense that water vertices could have been turned horizontal to carve these flutes. A high density of ruts can be found up in the mountains and throughout glaciated regions. A fluid creates a rut because water coalesces under the force of gravity. This is the focusing force of water, and it creates focused erosion. But ice cannot do this because it is a solid, and is subject to rigid body dynamics and not fluid dynamics. So why should all these rutted out landscapes be attributed to ice? Glaciers move slowly in wide valleys and distribute erosion evenly along the valley floor. But the erosion of Arctic landscapes has tightly focused erosion, with scratches and winding ruts. These ribbon lakes are actually river ruts. And can be found in drumlin country. Drumlins can tell us about the current direction that formed them. Here it shows a current coming down from the mountain, and then a current from the north. This is supposed evidence of a moving ice sheet. Whether you accept the subglacial flow model or not, both theories have ice sheets advancing great distances. They moved forward with lobes that are responsible for carving out the Great Lakes. On each advance, it should leave behind a terminal moraine. But there is no evidence of these moraines. And no evidence of the Laurentide Ice Sheet's terminal moraines. This is referred to as the Ice Age Controversy. Terminal moraines are the one piece of evidence that would distinguish solid ice as even being present on the landscape. 
but they are completely missing. A landslide can form a moraine because the land is sliding down a very steep slope. But where does a heavy ice sheet get the energy to move across the North American plains? The static friction would be so great that ice sheets would be incredibly still and very benign to the landscape. Ice sheets can melt away without even disrupting drumland formations. Ice is not the powerful eroder it is made out to be.